We are live. Um, welcome back to week two of Math 1324, Business Math. Uh, last week we had a lot of our sessions canceled because of the hurricane. I hope everyone's okay. It seems like we got spared most of the bad stuff. Let me know if, if that's not the case. This week, week two, we're moving forward. It's still technically review. We're starting to move into the financial math applications that might be a little bit new for some people. Simple interest, the rules of exponent. I think the links and the other reference material that's posted on Blackboard will be mostly good enough for that. Maybe on Wednesday, we'll go over specifically the simple interest time value of money problems. Today, I wanted to focus on exponential, radical, and logarithmic forms, since that's probably not something that, that you've seen in, a, in at least a while. I collect them all together, the exponential, radical, and the logarithmic forms. I, I connect them all together. I just call them the ERL forms, the URL forms. Uh, that's not like an official math textbook. Or, by the way, if you search Google for ERL forms, you probably would not find good information about it. I certainly went out looking specifically for web pages which talked about all three of them together. Didn't find any really good ones. You find a lot of information about the connection between exponential and logarithmic forms, the E and the L, but not a lot of good information about the E and the R, right? The E and the R sometimes go together okay, right? Uh, because they're fraction exponents, but that's not exactly what I'm getting at when I when I say ERL forms in this week. And almost no reference material about the, the, the link between radical and logarithmic form. And so I wanna I wanna be able to talk about that more specifically during live sessions. ERL forms. They all go together. That is, this idea of the exponential forms of course I have to be able to spell first. The exponential forms, radical forms, and the logarithmic forms. Logarithm forms. They're all three parts of the same cohesive whole. If you think about mathematical statements, right, I can give you a relationship between three numbers. I'll give you an example. This is not the ERL forms. This is multiple and division forms. So let's look at an example for multiplication. So I know, for example, that three times five equals 15. That's something I'm pretty familiar with from how I understand multiplication to work. But isn't there another way to write this exact same statement, but maybe in a different order? It wouldn't be using the multiplication idea. I would actually start with the 15 and go back to the three. You see how it's the same numbers, only I've sort of rearranged them. How would I finish that mathematical statement? I know that 3 times 5 is equal to 15, but how does that mean that 15 and 3 are related? Pause for a moment. Go ahead and... and Type something out in the chat, or you can turn on your mic if you want to, but I understand if you don't want to because I am recording the live sessions. Some people get a little skittish about that. I definitely had to make my peace with that. I would normally be comfortable. But where I live now. Okay, so I see in the comments there, I see, I see five. Okay, so 15 and five, it is how it's related. I see the same three numbers, 15, five, and three. But how are they related? How are 15 and 5 related in such a way to give me 3?
can think about that is what fills in that blank. Yeah, I see someone else there. And, and so 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3. It's the same relationship. It is 15 divided by 5 is 3. It's saying the exact same thing as 3 times 5 is equal to 15. It's just emphasizing a different beginning point and a different end point of the same relationship. And so this I would call a multiply. This I would call a divide. They are part of the same relationship. Of course, when it comes to when it comes to multiplication and division, I also have to be able to get five, right? You see how I rearranged this relationship? One of them ends with a 15, the other one ends with a 3. Can you rearrange the numbers and the operations to also make this end with a 5? I phrase this using the same relationship. Guessing since I've already used the 5, I need to use the 3 and the 15. But how how are those things related? Okay, give me five. Hmm. Know that fifteen. I did by three gives me five. And this is also a divide relationship. And when it comes to multiply and divide, there weren't actually three different names because multiplication and division, they mean the same thing. At least when multiplication occurs in a different order, it means the same thing. That won't be true for exponents, logarithms, and radicals, but it is true for multiplication and division. So it's not a perfect example, but I think looking at this, it's the same three numbers, same three numbers, and it's the same relationship between those numbers. But when I look at that relationship in a different way or in a different light, I might use a different mathematical word or a different mathematical concept to express what that relationship is. So 3 times 5 is equal to 15 tells me at the same time, tells me 15 divided by 5 is 3, and it tells me that 15 divided by 3 is equal to 5. All of those things are rolled up in the same relationship. And even though I might not actually write all three of them down, when I tell you one of them, the other two are also implied. Could tell me the other two. Exponents, radicals, and logarithms work the same way. Let's see how this looks. So I'm going to take a few numbers and I'm going to relate them together in this way. This means 2 to the exponent of 3 equal to 8. And just to get some vocabulary out of the way, the big number I call the base, the little number I call the exponent, and the result on the other side is technically called the power. I know that word is going to be a little confusing because you're used to using the word power to mean the little number, the exponent. Mathematically speaking, that number should be power, although I would understand if you called it the result or call it something else, right? Because that power word can be a little confusing. I want to take this exponential relationship and I want to see what it looks like in a different light. That is, I want to take the same three numbers. I want to have something that equal to 2. And I want to have a mathematical statement that equals 3. See how I've just rearranged this equation 
the three different numbers that I have, two, three, and eight. Well, that can be a little bit challenging though. So if I, if I wanna end with a two, that must mean I have to be able to put the other numbers together, three and eight, in such a way that it equals two. And I, and I, won't, I won't ask for, for, your, for, for your guesses there because not everybody is, is thought about numbers that way. Let me show you. They're related this way. Cube root of eight is equal to two. And if you have a calculator, you can double check that on your own. And so this exponent relationship and this radical relationship, radical is the word that I'll use anytime I see that square root symbol. It won't always be a square root, of course. This one's a cube root, a fourth or a fifth root, or any root. Anytime I see this radical notation, I'll use the word radical to describe it. Oh, sorry about that. A bunch of cat prints on my screen. Bad kitty. It's the same three numbers and the same relationship expressed in a different way. Mathematical words that go along with that, you can see that what used to be the exponent is now inside the little crook of the square root or the radical. I'll, I'll even zoom in on it for you here. What used to be the exponent is now inside the little crook there. That's called the index when it comes to radical notation. And what used to be the power on the inside of the radical, when I'm talking about radicals, I would call that the radicand. I, mean, I, won't, I won't ask you to memorize all of the vocabulary, but I will write it down because I'm a mathematician. I'll use the correct vocabulary whenever possible, and your homework might use these words in the questions. I don't want I don't want to be super confusing, but I do have to be precise enough to ask what I want in the questions without um, being too completely off the wall. And so I did want to get these in our notes. So the little number is called the index, and that used to be exponent. The number underneath called the radicand. And you know what? I'm not exactly sure what the number is. Final result. The result. It would probably be called the power as well. Because when it comes to math, radicals and exponents are really the same thing. I'm just doing a quick Google search here to see if, if there is... A better word that I could use. Not one that we will actually call out too often, which is why I don't have that word right off the top of my head. No, I don't see a good one. But I will come back and I'll fill this in. I'll change it. I find another good one. You might call that the result, or you might call that order. Sometimes it's called the order. That would be more of an exponent word, but radical. Again, the same three numbers are just rearranged in a different way, but I'm emphasizing that base number. You might even call it the base. So if I'm looking for a base, and I have the other two, I should use a radical to figure out what's going on. Well, the third way to look at this is also going to be a different type of relationship. Right? Remember up above, whenever we did multiplication, the other two were di both division because it doesn't matter what the order was when it came to multiplication. I could say three times five or five times three, it didn't matter. But now when it comes to exponential forms, it does matter. Two, the exponent of three is not the same as three 
to the exponent of two. So because the orders actually need two different ways to express the different orders of my operations. And here's what this will look like. This will be log, logarithm, L-O-G, spelled out, base two of eight equal to three. Excuse me for one moment. I'm going to let the cat out of the office. Didn't realize she was in here when I closed the door. Okay. This one, the log is part of it, and I've got the base. Because we, we use these same numbers, I, I, might, I would probably call that, we'd call that power. And you see the result of the logarithm operation is the exponent. I put them in, in quotation marks like that because it, they probably do have different words for them whenever I'm looking at it in a different context. And just like we, we call something the product of the factors when we're talking about multiplication, but we have different words when we're talking about division. Right? You might have heard the words divisor, dividend, quotient, specifically when we're talking about division. I bet you there's other words like that for logarithm. It's just not ones that we use that often. Yeah, I'm looking you know, on like a kind of a geeky math website. So when I ask the question, hey, what's this thing called? And powers mathematicians we basically have the same the same argument that I do. We usually just call it the exponent. Really, not really a separate word that often. The important part is that we know which part of the relationship we're talking about. The important part here is that whenever we're doing one of them, we are looking for, or the result is, a very specific part of the relationship. So whenever we have an exponential operation, the result always gives me the power. Remember that word power, that weird word that's going to mean something a little different than what we're used to. Whenever we have a radical, the result of that operation, tell me about the base. And whenever we have a logarithm, the result of that operation will tell me about the exponent. And we'll need to use all three of these types of mathematical equations and types of, of relationships in this class when we're solving for numbers dealing with exponents. You're going to see that starting next week whenever we see compound interest. Right. As an example, right, we might see uh, an equation like this, 5 third power x. This one is simple enough because it's already given to you in the form that you want. You see, this equation is written in exponential form. Right? It doesn't use a radical, and it doesn't use a logarithm. It's written in exponential form, and the thing that I'm looking for is the power, which tells me I don't need to rearrange this. I can just put this directly into my calculator. You may have already done that, 5 to the third power. Right? You see, it's a, that word power is so misused, I just did it myself. Right? 
5 to the exponent of 3, or a more precise way, that might be the third power of y, or the third power of 5, 5 times 5 times 5, 125. That's not too bad. But what if I wanted the same relationship, but I wanted to solve for a different part of it? Let me solve for the base here. The four. You see how this problem is given to me in exponential form. It's written as an exponent, but I'm not solving for the exponent. Right? The x, the thing I do not know, is not in the in the the power position. Right? The x is actually the base in this problem. Well, if I'm solving for the base, I shouldn't be using an exponent. Right, to help me solve for that, I'm going to go back to my chart over here. I want the base. I should be using a radical statement. Find it. Well, so how do I change from an exponential statement into a radical statement? You know, I'm just going to try to rearrange all the pieces to go where they fit. Let's see. So when it comes to an, a radical statement, if the exponent goes in the index, write it there, 3. And the power goes underneath radicand, that is 64, and the base is on the other side, x. You see how transforming from an exponential statement to a logarithmic statement gave me something that I could work with. My calculator could figure out what the cube root of 64 is if I asked it. But before, my calculator really couldn't handle x to the third power is equal to 4. Some advanced calculators might be able to plug in a bunch of numbers very quickly and give me a, a good answer. But it's not always guaranteed. So in doing this problem, I started with an exponential statement, but I transferred it to a radical statement to actually figure out. I plug that into my calculator. By the way, speaking of calculator, I had one on my desk. Did I put it away? Ah, this. I'm using this one. This one's a Casio FX115. Um, it's not the best calculator in the world, but it is pretty cheap. And most importantly, it has all the buttons that I need. It has the little logarithm button. It has the radical button. Um, a TI will have some calculators, like a TI-36X Pro. I'll go ahead and type that into the chat. TI-36X Pro will, will have what you need. Uh, the Casio has a few different models with the same buttons on it. So the Casio, I have a 115. I think I've seen other ones like a 994 or a 230. Okay. We'll have very similar buttons, but if you if you look up a picture of a Casio FX115 on Google, right, pretty much every Casio calculator that does the same thing will look very similar to the FX115. So just compare the picture that you see online. Hey, does it look like that one? Yeah, it's got all the same buttons on it. The number might be a little bit different, like 230991 or something like that. But both of those calculators will be pretty inexpensive, about dollars twenty dollars i think i i got a whole bunch of them i have them all downstairs from, from costco that i used to take the class with me it's not required by any means but not a whole lot of phone calculators or even website calculators are good at letting you type in the numbers that you need uh, one that actually i think may work for you i'm going to link it in the chat is the Desmos Scientific Calculator. Right link, there we go. Desmos Scientific Calculator will actually let you type in radical and I don't know why I'm doing it on my main computer, not on the tablet where everyone can see it. The Desmos 
scientific calculator will let me do all that. Here we go. So this decimals calculator, I could type in third root of 64. Something I can do. And it's equal to four. So the decimals calculator is actually a really good one. And so if you if you learned how to use it, right, you don't need a handheld calculator like one of these, but it's always nice to have one. No one likes to fumble around and, and be without one when you need one. And I know that seems kind of silly to say in this sort of era of distance learning and Zoom call and everything else on the internet, um, but there are some nice benefits to having one of those around. So if you have an extra, an extra few dollars, I think it's a good investment. Back to my nodes here. So in this case, x would equal 4. And that came from the calculator. One more example. Let's say 5 to some unknown power, 70. This one's a tricky one. Right? You may have been able to find the other solutions in your head, right? You might have been able to say, oh, okay, I knew that 4 to the third power was 64. I didn't need a calculator for you might have said, well, I know what 5 to the third power is. I, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. I didn't need a calculator for that either. This last one's a bit trickier. 5, some unknown exponent. 5 squared is 25. 5 cubed, 125. I'm looking for 70. Somewhere in the middle. Somewhere between 5 to the second power up to the third power. This is where knowing the, the exponents, radicals, and logarithms, this is where it will actually help us. Because I need to find an exponent, I'm going to rewrite this thing as a logarithm statement. Base goes in here, that's the base, five. And the power goes on the inside, that's 70. That's logarithm base five of 70. Let me go back to my Desmos calculator and see, does Desmos have the log button on it? You'll probably have to go over here to this function tab. Yeah, here it is, way over here. Logarithm. Logarithm, oops. Back. Logarithm. And I make it do a base. I, I know how to do it. The, on the screen, no. Unfortunate. I know how to do it using the keyboard, but let me do it if I do it on the keyboard. Yes. Now let's see, does it actually understand that? I'll show you how to do that on the keyboard if this actually works. I'm looking to get 5 and 70 there. Uh, no. It doesn't. You can see even this decimals calculator, which I told you would be awesome, it doesn't really like that. I might try to do something like Wolfram Alpha, maybe that works. Symbo Lab, maybe that one will work. That's what I need it to do, log base 5 of 70. I'm going to go to my trusty handheld calculator here, which will do log base 5 of 70. I'll have to hold it up to the camera. You can see the result. Trying to point it in such a way so that the light actually hits. There you go. You can kind of see it there. Log base 5, 70, equal to that decimal, 
three, nine. Okay. A win for the calculator. And that's an approximate answer. Every time your calculator gives you a big long decimal like that, it's always approximate. The problem will tell you how to round your answer. And, and if it doesn't, just be reasonable. If I'm talking about some number of years, going to four decimal places is probably not reasonable. Way too specific. Think about it. One decimal place is a tenth of a year. That's about a month. Two decimal places is a tenth of a month, about three days. Three decimal places, a tenth of three days, so three tenths of a day. That's like three to six hours. That's like six hours. Really specific. And then a tenth of that? Yeah, four decimal places is way too specific when it comes to numbers of years. I find a good one on the online that does log bases like that. I, for some reason, I thought the, the decimals calculator actually did, but it doesn't. I'll link it to you. But we can see that all three of these, exponential form, the radical form, and the logarithm form, they're all useful in their own instances. Because I don't know ahead of time whether I'll be solving for the base solving for the exponent or solving for the power. So I need to know which form to use, figure it out. You know, make up a problem that's very much like one of your homework problems. Here. 216. And we've got a this one's a radical statement. Now we have log base ten thousand equal to three. I know that's cut off a little bit, so I'll move it up. Take a moment. Pause my video and, and, and give you a moment to work. I mean, so basically what I want to do is I want to write all three of these statements in all three forms. Everything in this column will be the exponential form. Everything in this column will be the radical form. Everything in this column will be the logarithmic form. I should be able to go back and forth between them. Explanations up there. You can see how I've already started playing these around, right? Moving them from one form to the other. Take a moment to see if you can take all three of these statements and write them in all three forms. I'll be right back. Now it can be a little challenging to type these things out in a text form right? when you don't have symbols and you can't write the little numbers. I'm going to type something out and have to help you 
format your answers. I'm going to use the that I did earlier. This is the sort of mathematical code for 2 to the third power is equal to 8 in that little caret symbol on your keyboard. Shift 6, I believe. If I were to write that as a radical, this is going to be a, a weird one. Not perfect. So that's the third root of 8 equal to 2. And um, if you're typing things into MyOpenMath, that's the form that, that you can use. I know that MyOpenMath has the buttons, so you can type that in without using the code. But if you need to type these things into a discussion forum post, that's the code that you need to use. Log. Base two. Eight. That um, the underscore shift. And then the minus key. That's an underscore. Or the underscore, when we're typing things out on a typewriter, means the little numbers on the bottom. Carrot. Up. So now that we have seen kind of the, the weird ways that we have to write these mathematical notations in a non mathematical setting, when you take this exponential statement, 6 exponent 3 equal to 216. Can you write that as a radical statement? Can you write that as a logarithmic statement? What would that look like? on a phone or something like that and you don't have access to the symbols, you can, you can just write it out best you can. Power exponent base no exponent power base log base or exponent. That's a pretty decent oh. See that I wrote underneath my face, didn't I? Hide my video for a moment. Here we go. That is my translation guide. Help me translate between one form and the other. I use base, exponent, and power. I use the same terminology for all three. That way we didn't have to memorize all the fancy words like index and radicand right away. This first statement, base 6, exponent is 3, and the power 216. Following my little translation guide, exponent goes in here. 
what goes underneath is the power in and the base goes on the other side. So the cube root or the third root of 216 is equal to six. You check that with your calculator. Likewise, go into logarithms, logarithm, checking my, my table on the right there. So the logarithm and the base goes on the bottom, six. The power goes on the inside, 216 equals exponent three. Huh. Log base six, 216, three. I could check that with my calculator as well. I'll leave the other four an exercise to the reader. By the way, I think there's a homework problem this week specifically about this skill. As I, if I remember correctly, I spent quite a long time coding it. I don't code all the problems in my open math, but you can usually figure out the ones that I coded because it does ask you a bit more details than the problem. The other problems would ask you just for a number, but I, I'm not, I don't always care about that because anyone can get a number, right? but it takes a little bit more to understand the relationship between all three of these forms. So I coded a question that specifically asked you to, to take one form and transform it into another form. That, that's made the basics of the ERL system. And I'll leave these as exercises for that. And we'll start seeing quite a lot of these next week because we'll look at things like this. We'll, we will say, just as an example, we won't solve this out. We'll look at a formula like this one. And I know this one looks super complicated compared to what we just got finished talking about because what we just finished talking about, there was one number for the base, one number the exponent, one number for the power. But starting next week, we'll say, okay, this is the same idea. And the exponent, or excuse me, the variable that I'll be solving for is up here. It's part of the exponent. I'm what I'm given right now is in an exponential form, right? It's written as base exponent power. But if I'm solving for the exponent, I'm going to know, hey, I need to change to a logarithm form. And so we'll, we'll rearrange this into a logarithm form. And of course, next week, it'll be a little more complicated because we've got this 250 that we'll have to deal with next week. So we'll have to deal with that 250 before we change it to a logarithm form. We would do that. We would deal with the 250. We change it to logarithm form. And then we type it into our calculators. I mean, again, that's why having one of these things is going to be really nice. Uh, but if I can find one online, hopefully I can, that, that handles the logarithm bases, I'll link it to you. What I will do in the meantime, though, is that I will say that, for example, if I want to do log base 6 of 216, there's a formula you can use that any calculator will be able to handle. It will just be the ln, which is a button, is on almost every calculator, ln of the number on the inside, divided by ln of the base, like that. You can make any scientific calculator do log with a base. Um, if I went back to my Desmos calculator, I could make it do log 6 of 216, but I would have to manually go in and tell it Hey, I need ln, which is over here, ln, ln of 216 divided by 
Ellen. Six. And that gives me the same decimal. Oh. Of course not, because I didn't put Ellen of 216. That was my fault for not typing it all out. Ln of 216 divided by Ln. That's equal to... Just like we knew it should have been from earlier. That, that's, it's not really a cheat code, because if this were a college algebra class, we would study why that works. Uh, but because this is a business math class, right, we'll just give the formulas. You wanted to look that up. It's called the change of base formula. But I expect most people find a calculator that it works rather than learning a new formula. It's just easier to find a calculator which has that ability. But again, older scientific calculators, they don't have that ability because scientists would understand the rules of logarithms and they would understand that they don't need that button. Newer calculators are built for students. Students don't know that rule always. So they have that button built in. Here, here's that button on my Casio calculator. Logarithm button. You get to type your own. So that's about the end of the exponentials, radicals, and logarithms. Um, when we come back on Wednesday, I can talk about the simple interest and the time value of money problems, especially the bond. There's a special link for bonds this week. I can't remember if it's this week or next week. But I'll talk about that stuff on Wednesday. Bring your questions in. I, mean, I know that this is an online class, and so you don't have to come to any live session. Um, but this is a good time to can answer the questions that you have. So at the end of every class, I'll stop the recording. And after I stop recording, I'll ask for specific questions. That way people that are here, they don't feel shy. So oh, I don't want to be on the recording, but I want to ask this question. So I'll go ahead and stop here for today, and we'll open it up.